Now, if you didn't see it, last week's episode, I walked through how to make this cool, worn steel that can be coated with paint. It can all be customized. You can change the color. You can change the amount of wear and it's fully procedural and it's in key shot. Follow the link above to check that out. You're not here for last week's tutorial. I know that you're here for this week's tutorial. So what I'm going to be walking you guys through is how to create a cool flickering candle animated material in key shot that looks just like what you see here on screen. Now, in order to follow along with this week's tutorial, you're going to need some project files. So head on over to willgibbons.com slash downloads to get your files right now. All right, to get started, you wanna import your uh, project files. So we're gonna grab the FBX, drag that into Keyshot. We'll take the default import settings. Now, once it's inside Keyshot, double click the candle. Let's change its material to translucent. We're gonna take the texture color and we're gonna start off with yellow and then we'll desaturate it quite a lot. And then the subsurface is gonna be the color that kind of bleeds through. So I want this to also be pretty yellow. See how it's kind of glowing yellow? We, it's too much now, so we wanna take this down quite a bit here. And you want this color to be pretty bright. Last but not least, we can take our surface color down a little bit further. Um, we'll play with that later. Next, we wanna double click on the wick. Make sure that's a nice dark black. Make it about five or so. Now we wanna change our environment, so find the three panel straight 4K, give it a double click. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and um, go up to edit, add geometry, add plane, drag this up above our model. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees, hold shift to snap, enable scale, drag it out. There we go. And next thing we need to do is actually, before we put a texture on here, I wanna handle um, the glossiness of this material right now. We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of roughness here. Now double click the plane, and we're gonna change this type to emissive. Uh, click on the material graph, all right, and then what we wanna do is actually load our texture in here and we're going to use an animated video, which is cool. So if I right click, I'm gonna go down to textures and video map. Plug this into the color of the emissive plane, double click the video map node, and then find the folder to load your frames. Now in this case, we're going to find the project files that we just downloaded, import the MP4 file, the video file, it's 15 seconds long. Go ahead and click on that, hit open, and it's gonna give us an option. We have to extract the frames. Set this to JPEG, not PNG. And before we hit OK, click on this folder. And right now, if I don't create a folder, it's gonna put all these frames on my desktop. I don't want that. So go ahead and hit New, Folder, and we'll call this Flame Frames. And we'll go ahead and select this folder. Go ahead and hit OK. All right, so it's imported, but it's upside down. Go ahead and take the Move Texture button and we're gonna simply rotate this, hold shift to snap to 90. We'll go ahead and hit the green check. And then we wanna scale it up a little bit so it's not so small. And I'm gonna move it down a little bit too. So we're gonna turn on our translate handles, grab the red arrow to move it down. There we go, good enough. Let's go ahead and grab the outbound socket of the video map and plug this into the opacity of the emissive material. And what's really cool about this is if we go ahead and open our animation timeline, it's this little button down here if you missed it, we're gonna go ahead and close the material graph for a second and you'll see this big yellow bar. This is our animation. It's 15 seconds of pure animated flame goodness. Now, doesn't that just warm your heart? We're not quite done. There's a few things we wanna tweak, but it's looking pretty good so far. Now to move this plane down, I'm gonna hover over the candle flame and hit control D as in Delta this little blue guy, I'm just gonna grab it down and move it just a little bit so our wick is inside the candle. Now, if I were to go and take our environment and simply turn its brightness down, we'll notice that the flame is visible, but it's not putting out any light. And that's the issue with using the emissive material on here. While I'd like to use the area light material, we technically can't due to a limitation in the material graph. Uh, so we'll come back to this here in a second. I've got a good workaround. So we'll go back to one for my environment brightness and inside our scene tree, let's find our plane, right click and duplicate it and leave it right where it's at. 
Now what we wanna do is make sure it's not linked to the other one, so right click it again, and then down to material, and then unlink material. Sorry, that was off screen. Um, go ahead and double click that plane, and we're gonna change it from emissive to point light. And now I get this glow. If I hit L on the keyboard, it will turn on my light indicator. This is like a mini sun and it's too bright, but we're gonna animate a couple things about it. So if we go into the material graph, you can go ahead and find that we have our point light and this is left over. Uh, we can go ahead and delete this. And if we double click on our point light, it's way too bright. Let's bring it down to about 50 lumen. There we go. And to change its color, we're gonna go ahead and set kind of a, a neutral sort of Kelvin. If you don't see Kelvin here, just change it with the drop down in the color picker. Go to a warmer color to match the color of your candle. Very good. You know, as the candle gets warm, the wax is gonna melt. And this should be a little bit more liquid looking. We're just gonna go ahead and make it glossy up top and a little rougher down on the sides. So to do that, double click it, open the material graph, so here's our translucent. We're gonna right click down to textures and find a color gradient. Click C to preview it and then go ahead and center on part and then take your move texture tool. We're gonna to rotate this until the black is toward the top. Now we are gonna fade from glossy to rough and we want a tighter transition than this. So take your scale down quite a bit, 0.25. And then let's go ahead and take the move texture tool. We're gonna to move this up so the black part is just on top and it's nowhere else. So exit color gradient with C, plug this back into your translucent roughness. So now it's gonna be rougher on the edges, but it's actually a little bit too rough. So we're gonna insert a color to number here. Give this a preview with C once again. The white is pure, like entirely rough and that's too much. So we're gonna take our output to down to darken it and we'll bring this down to about 0.1 and the black will leave right where it's at. So get out of that preview and now we should have kind of a more matte or rough edge down here, but a glossy material up top, which is really cool. So now I do want to address the light here. If we go ahead and hit play on the animation, we see our animated flame. Let's go ahead and take our environment and darken it. We're gonna point, uh, point zero 0.01 there we go. So you can see if I were to toggle off the light that we added, that's the difference. You really want the top of that, that translucent material to glow, which is really cool. The candle kind of dances around and the light itself isn't changing. Um, so we can do a little bit of that. So let's double click on the plane, open its material graph. And for this point light, I'm gonna do something a little bit crazy here. This part's totally optional if you don't have time or you simply don't care. Right click, we're gonna to go to animation, down to color fade. You're gonna plug your color fade into the point light color. So right now it's set to white. Let's go into our color fade and you see we have a gradient once again. And if we go ahead and click on this white, we're gonna go ahead and set the temperature to be warm like we had it. And I'm going to save this color swatch and pull it to the bottom left of my screen. And I'll hit okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to the black at the other end, do the same thing. Very good, so now we have the same color here, but we want it to flicker a little bit. So we need to change its brightness. And so what we're gonna do is add a bunch of color stops. So you're gonna hit this add stop button. And if we go ahead and change the color of this, we can actually just take it and set it to HSV and reduce the value a little bit so it's not quite so bright. You don't need to go crazy here because our eyes will be able to see a bit of a difference. Um, and then the other thing is, Unfortunately, there's a lot of repetition here. So I'm gonna add a bunch of color stops and there's no way to automate this process. I'm really sorry. Um, if you want, you can just take from the project file this material that I'm making and just use it on your own so you don't have to do this. I'll probably speed this next part up a little bit. Uh, but what you can do is pull this guy off here and we're gonna stretch it out. And it helps the wider your monitor is, the more details you can pack into here. And so basically, I'm literally just gonna go step by step, click the dot, play with the brightness a little bit, click the dot, play with the brightness, and rinse and repeat.
All right, and there you have it. So I've also clumped these, so it's gonna be a little sporadic the way it flickers. And we're gonna redock this on the right-hand side. Now, the next thing we wanna do is this animation's only lasting for one second. So we're gonna change this all the way up to 15 and make sure it starts at zero seconds. And so now we should be able to see if we drag this bar all the way back, we have our two animations happening at the same time. Turn off the plane that's emitting our, our candle and just play the animation we made, you'll see it kind of flickers a little bit. It's, it's subtle, you don't wanna go crazy with it, but it's enough. And now, if I go ahead and turn on that plane, the two work together to kind of give it a little bit of movement. You know, it works, it, it's good enough, I think. It also gives you complete control over the plane, so you can still play with the brightness of that candle texture as well, which is fun. All right, so now we're getting close. We want to go ahead and um, I'm gonna add a ground plane, control G. And we see on the ground, we have our shadow from our candle here. So inside our light material, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and set the radius to about point, uh, point 0.1. There we go. Soften the edge of that shadow. All right, and that's looking pretty good at this point. Uh, as far as our background goes, we can go to our environment settings, go to the background, add just a solid black color, and um, then we kind of fade into darkness here. If we go to our light tab and put us in product mode, uh, double click on the ground plane and turn on specular, make that white, and then add your roughness, like uh, say about 0.1. And if you do want a little bit of extra light in here, you can always go to your environment and increase this a little bit. We can also go quite a bit brighter. Your background color can you know, change to whatever you want it to be. I think I'll just go with kind of a dark gray for now. And um, if you want to make that little orange guy go away, hit L. If you go to the image styles tab on the upper right hand corner, go ahead and enable bloom and take your uh, bloom up to one and take your radius up to about uh, 20. So we see this nice soft glow and then increase our threshold until the candle does not have bloom, but just the light in the middle does, the flame. And then lastly, you wanna take your bloom intensity down to about 0.5, just so it's not overkill. And as it animates, that, that glow will still follow. So I actually forgot a couple of details. Uh, so the wick should have like a little orange glowing tip. So let's do that really quickly. Let's go into our material graph and go ahead and right click and get a texture color gradient, C to preview. We're gonna change us uh, from planar to cylinder, or sorry, spherical. Center it on part and scale this guy way down. So we're gonna have a little um, kind of a sphere and it's right in the middle there. We're gonna move it on over. So it should be aligned kind of on the tip and we're gonna go even smaller yet. So 0.1, so it should be like one millimeter and then if we get even closer, you can see, I wanna move this down a little bit. So um, yeah, right around here's looking pretty good. Uh, yes, we do have pixelation going on in the flame. Um, sorry, it's not super high res. I'm limited by the lens that I have for my camera. So hopefully I'll get a better lens and can shoot some better stuff soon. Let's go ahead and set our color from white to something like a light orange. Yeah, let's go ahead and leave that black. And then if you want, we can add one more stop here. This one can be more like a dark orange. And the reason uh, is because it's getting cooler as it goes further away from the burning point. Um, so let's go ahead and take our color gradient, hit C, and then right click. Uh, we're gonna go to materials and emissive. And we're gonna plug this in as a label. And we're gonna plug this color gradient into the opacity of the emissive, uh, not the opacitive, uh, the color. We have our glowing orange tip, and then if we take our emissive and set this up to say two or three, there we go, so we got a nice glow. Now the second part that we're missing is the blue part of the flame, um, so unfortunately we have to fix that. And we're gonna fix that in the material graph. So double click on the flame, get back in the material graph, and here we're gonna right click and get another texture and a color gradient, see to preview. This time another spherical gradient and center it on part and scale this guy way down. And what we want is to do the same thing we did before, but with blue. So we're gonna set this to a nice dark blue. And that's pretty much it. And then from here, we're going to actually uh, combine this with our video map. So take the top connector, down to utilities, color composite, 
set the color gradient as the background, give the uh, C to preview, and set our color composite to screen. And now we have our blue dot up here. So grab our color gradient, move texture, and drag this guy right down to the bottom of our flame. So I'm gonna scale it up. Very good. And now if we get out of our color composite, we should see it. Uh, oh, here's the other thing. Let's make sure with our blue, if we bring it up toward the top more, we're gonna see it more. As you go darker, it's gonna become invisible. So make sure it's a uh, full, like 100% value. And then if you bring it to the left, you'll get a little bit more blue going on in there. All right. And uh, that's pretty much it. So now if we're going to go ahead and close this and we take our background of our environment and we, re we reduce the brightness, you should be able to see it's, we got that blue going on there. Let's go ahead and take our wick and move this guy down a little bit. It's sticking out a bit far. And then maybe even our um, flame and the light as well. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Now we have that blue center and then you can just play with that, uh, that blue part and that gradient. So if you make it a little bit larger, should be more noticeable and it's going to become and have more of an effect as it overlays the light itself because everything around there is black so it's not going to it won't bleed out too much so we can make this even you know, 1.5 a little bit larger and now it's much more noticeable so there we go we got our candle and just a few bits that i forgot to mention earlier so sorry about that hopefully this isn't too weird i know these tutorials are a little bit scrappy and put together um but uh the more of these i do Hopefully we'll smooth things out. So, all right, hopefully that wasn't too jarring. I'm sorry I forgot those details before, but uh, all right, there you have it, guys. I hope this was useful. I hope this answered some questions. And better yet, I hope this gives you ideas of ways you can take this technique and use it in your own projects uh, down the road. So if you found this video useful, consider a thumbs up, a comment, please subscribe. I will be publishing new episodes every single Monday. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And until next time, happy rendering.